this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at the Cookie variant of the Syslock DOS virus. Now, Cookie seems to be a fairly modified version of Syslock, but what's interesting is that some of the variants of Syslock are known as Advent, which you can see clearly at the DOS prompt here. In fact, Advent 2232, which I believe is the variant thing, I'll make a correction if it's not, is the actual name in the repository for the cookie variant. And it's a pretty large variant because it's 11,752 bytes as we can see there. And I've already copied it to the hard drive off of the disk I have in the Packard Bell here to c colon slash temp slash cookie dot exe. It is an executable file in MZ, so it's not a dot com file. So let me go ahead and change over to C and go into a temp directory. There we can see it. I'm going to check the date. The one thing I actually need to set the date correctly, I believe. Well, I'm not sure what today's date is, but I will just put it as 17. So, and we'll see why I needed the date changed in a minute. So if I go ahead and run cookie, I get a little bit of hard drive activity and it returns me to the prompt. Now, Cookie is not a terminate state resident virus, like most of them. Again, it's another one of these direct action infectors. Anywhere on drive C, there's a .com or .exe file, even some potential data files of other extensions can get infected with the syslock variant here of Cookie. So, that's why there's no files here in the temp directory, because every time I run it, I'm going to spell cooties, Every time I run it, it's just going to look for a .com or .exe file somewhere on drive C. And it's at random, so I wouldn't know which directory to find it in. So I'm just going to hit and run cookie a bunch of times. Now, I don't know if it has a limit before its payload, because I noticed a couple times I just run it here, it only did hard drive activity for maybe the first three or four instances of running it and now it's not doesn't seem like it's searching and infecting anymore so unless it needs a fresh restart to continue or it just selects a few programs to infect and then when those infected programs are run it spreads more so it may be a virus that replicates in that fashion so without really knowing where the infected .com or .exe files are I'm just going to go ahead and move on and talk about the payload. And this is why we changed the date earlier in the video. So the payload of the cookie variant here of Syslock activates any time after April 1st. So I had it I had it set in August, so I'll just set it to my birthday this year, August 5th. That's And let's go ahead and just rerun cookie here. This way we don't have to try to look for an infected file. And the first try it brings up the payload there. And it says, I want a cookie. Now, of course, you can sit here and press buttons or anything. The keyboard is not locked out at all. But what cookie is doing here with this message saying, I want a cookie, is it actually wants a cookie. And what it means by that is we actually have to type out the word cookie on the keyboard. So if I press C, C, O, O, K, I, E, it then changes to burps and then it returns us to the command prompt. Now, if this was an infected program, it could return us to the program, but there's a little more on it that I'm also going to get to in the next minute or two. So after the first payload here, as long as it's after that payload date, if you run an infected program a couple more times, it will eventually reproduce the payload. And it looks like after about five or six instances of running an infected program with the cookie variant of Syslock, it will reproduce the payload here. And I do notice that there's hard drive activity each time one of these instances of the infected program of Cookie here is loaded. So it may be replicating more after the payload date. Again, just like before, type Cookie, 
gives us the BERT message and returns us to the prompt. Again, it may turn us back to the original program if it was an infected program we ran. Now, the thing about syslock, which is where this, vari this cookie variant of it stems from, syslock, its kind of purpose is to soft lock the system, which is why it's called syslock. And because of that, it tends to break the programs that it infects, whether they're .com or .exe or even some data files. Now, to save some time, what I'm going to do instead is actually show some footage taken during testing of this cookie variant here, where it is actually, the program is still broken. So the software, whether it's the .com or .exe, doesn't work anymore, even if you got we take the virus out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some examples of that from video clips here. And now we see why it gets the name syslock. Even though we've managed to disinfect the syslock virus from the programs here that were infected, one of these here that is disinfected that had syslock is apparently no longer functional, which apparently is the goal of syslock in the first place, to lock the system. So even though we've managed to remove the virus by disinfecting the infected programs, unfortunately, those programs don't work anymore and they basically just soft lock the system when we try to load them. So we can't fully boot into MS-DOS 6.2 here and because command.com was one of the files that was also infected with syslog that got disinfected, as you can see, we can't even get the command interpreter to come up even if we bypass everything, so we need a startup disk. And another instance of where syslog is causing a problem, this time it had damaged the Windows packet driver that I have on here, which is at the end of the autoexec.bat file. Here the system has a tendency to keep on restarting when it gets there because the program crashes. I see it goes into a warm reboot. And we can look at this in detail a little bit by looking at the actual win packet driver, because if I try to load it, you see the system just soft locks and nothing happens. Other times when I've run it, it has displayed random characters of garbage. So obviously that packet driver program has been damaged by syslock and again syslock is kind of doing what the name says on the box and just locking up the system. And so there you have it. So even though every time you run cookie here and you eventually end up with this payload after April 1st and of course you start guessing it with cookie, if you've got a system infected with it and you subsequently disinfect those programs, well, there's a pretty good chance that those programs are not going to work anymore. Again, whether they're a .com or .exe type of program. So the original point of syslock is still there in this cookie variant here of soft locking the system. So, with that, that pretty much covers the cookie variant of the syslock DOS virus.